it wasn't here this morning. I'm looking around the room. Where is he? Where is he? He says, there's up on the stage there. Jolene. Praise God. Just like her dad. Full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, praise God. That's a great testimony there. Lives being changed. I tell you, there's a lot of people are realizing that they need Jesus. Amen. I tell you, they, they, this last few years has really changed a lot of people's lives and circumstances and situations. But I tell you, it's important for us to stay plugged in. And you know, I'm really glad to see us all in church this morning. Praise God. I know it's coming up to Christmas and people are talking about lockdowns again and you know, all of these kind of things. There's a new variant and all of this kind of stuff. You know what? This world is always going to have problems. Always. And I tell you, if the news becomes our place of feeding, I tell you, we will never be at peace. Amen? Because I tell you, there's fear. What's And, and next week there'll be something else. And the week after that there'll be something else. But I'm telling you, we have the good news. And it never changes. So I tell you, we, we, we don't have to miss a step in God. And you know what, I've my mind made up, and I had right from the beginning of all of this, when it all started, I'm not losing my joy over this, amen. I'm not going to lose a step in God. I'm just going to keep pressing on in the things of God and doing what God's called me to do, amen. And it's, a lot, it's an easier way to do it. It really is than living in fear. I praise God, we're all here expecting, amen. It's great to see what God's doing. Praise God. I'm delighted that Pastor Joe's down the country ministering and seeing people's lives change. Because you know what? I tell you, he's a, a, a powerful minister and he's got a, a gift that's, that's for here and for other places as well. So that's a, that's a joy. Amen. And I am honored to be here this morning, as I always am. It's a joy to be here and minister the Word um, with you all. I was just coming up this morning, I was just thinking... Ministering to the cream of the crop today. That's just what I was thinking this morning coming up the road. Um, so praise God. Amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pray and we will um, share what, what I believe God's put on my heart for this morning. So praise God. Lord, we just, we just love you and just thank you, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for this wonderful church and these wonderful people, Lord God. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you're doing so, such a great work in this house, Lord God. And I thank you that the work that you've begun, you will complete, Lord. And so, Lord, we just praise you. We just thank you, Lord God, for your tremendous love and grace that's abounding towards us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm going to, I'm going to talk again to, today on our relationship with God. The last time I was here, I was sharing on face-to-face and having a close, intimate walk with God. Um, and actually, from, a, from what was here the last time, I've, I've, I've taken the message that I had preached here, and I've, I've ministered at um, lots of places, so I have, and, I, and I've seen how it affected people's lives, and, and no, it's just kept growing, so it has, and so I want to just continue on in that. You know, it's important for us to understand that we've been called into a relationship with God. You know, this isn't some religion that we were brought into. In actual fact, it was religion that was putting me off personally, giving my life to the Lord. Because I knew I wasn't good enough. Anybody else? Was anybody else like me? I knew I wasn't good enough. I knew I wasn't good enough to live by all of the rules that were given. I knew I couldn't keep them, and I thought... Walking with God was like, here's your bunch of rules, keep all of these. Because that was my understanding. Now, I understood that you needed to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. But then after that, I just didn't want to live in a box. But I'm telling you, when Jesus was presented to me as, you know, you walk with him in a relationship, and out of that relationship, he begins to change your life. And you end up living different, acting different, desiring different things, not because you've been given a list of rules, but because you have a relationship with Him. And the relationship is what it's all about. I talked the last time when I was here about how Jesus came, and He came to give us eternal life. And the Bible says eternal life is knowing the Father and Jesus Christ whom He sent in John chapter 17. So eternal life is not just existing forever. Eternal life is actually knowing God. And it's important for us to know Him. Not know about Him, but actually know Him. You get to know God. And this, this is a relationship. And it's so important to have that relationship. Also said about how the Holy Spirit moved in 
so that he could show us the Father, so that he could show us Jesus. And you can't know Jesus and you can't know the Father apart from the Holy Spirit. And he reveals the Father to you on the inside. Amen? Now, when we talk about faith in the Bible, it's our ability to believe and receive from God. And so we want to be able to receive what God has for us. So we have to be people of faith. You know, you know what faith's like? It's like a big arm that reaches out and lay holds on the promises of God and is able to bring them into reality. That's what faith is. It's when you believe God, you're laying hold on something. It's like for salvation. Many know we're saved by faith. So the only way we could get saved was to put faith in what Jesus done. Salvation was provided. We didn't come and say, you know, I'm a Protestant, I'm a Catholic. <laughs> no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wouldn't amount to a hill of beans. What you come is in faith. And you say, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he paid the price for me in full. And I lay hold on that. In other words, what you're saying is I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And you're laying hold of it by your believing. And you take a hold of the promises of God, that promise of salvation. You take a hold of that. And the many know what affected your life. You became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Do you know what that was by? By faith. Now, I want to show for a bit this morning that faith works by love. And I'm going to show the importance of the Word and how to be intimate with God through His Word. Faith works by love. What a powerful thing. That's a relationship. That's a relationship with God. Now, I could teach and, you know, Pastor Joe teaches and Many people teach on the principles of faith. They could talk, talk the principles of faith, step one, step two, step three, step four, and go through all of the principles, and that's good. But faith is more than just being mechanical. It's relational. It's important to know God. See, when you know God, you can have faith in Him. If you don't know God, you're going to find it very hard to trust Him. But when you know Him, you can put faith in him because I tell you, he's, he's trustworthy. See, that's relational. That's not just like, you know what, I, I, I have a promise, I quote the promise, I get it in my heart, I speak it out of my mouth, you know, I act on the word, and you become a robot. No, but there's a relationship. I trust my father. When he speaks something, I can base my life. That's relationship. So it's more than just mechanical. And I don't want my Christian walk to be mechanical. I don't want to be a robot. A Christian robot just can quote things da, 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 and just can quote scriptures, you know, like a computer with, without a relationship. No. Eternal life is to know the Father in Jesus Christ who he sent. Been brought into relationship. I don't, I don't want to be a robot. It'd be like in marriage. Imagine being a robot in marriage. No life in it. Which brought into a relationship. Well, I tell you, it's the same thing when you make Jesus the Lord and save you for your life. You're brought into a relationship with the Father. Amen? Um, you know, see, when it comes to, like, say, for instance, like, your, well, say, your body. Many just, well, that's it. It's coming up to Christmas. I'm going to say many just fire anything into your body, but maybe that's not the best thing coming up to Christmas, you know. <laughs> Roses, yeah, oh yeah, Quality Street, yep, mince pies, yep. Let's just pretend we're all health freaks in here for a moment, okay? <laughs> no, but when it comes to your body, you know there's certain things that your body needs. You know what? You you, you just don't fire anything into your body. You know you you, you want to get you want to get nutrition into your body. Are we your car? You know what? You want to get good fuel into your car. You know. Uh, we live on the, the border, okay, and there's a lot of garages around the border that are just dodgy when it comes to diesel. And, you know, you, you could go and get, um, you know, 20 quid of, of diesel and you'll get a bill for, you know, a thousand pound for fixing your car. And <laughs> that's, that's reality. I, we know loads of people that their cars just stop working and it was down to dirty diesel. Donna's brother the other week, he, he travels and um, and paints um, houses, but he puts a special type of paint on houses. So he's all over the country, and he goes especially around like um, the coast, 
um, does houses on the coast because this paint is meant to last for like 30 years or something like that. So, but he went and he got, he got diesel in the garage that he, he, he doesn't usually go to. This is just a couple of weeks ago. And it cost him hundreds to get his van fixed because of dirty diesel. The, the, the junk that they had to get out of his van just to get it to go. Why? Because of the wrong fuel that was put into the van. Well, I'm telling you, when it comes to our lives, okay, that's, that's car terms. But when it comes to our lives, what is the premium diesel that you want to put into your life if you're going to be a person of faith? You know, there is premium diesel that the Bible talks about that causes our faith to work. And what is that? As I'm saying, faith works by love. That's how faith works. See, a lot of people are trying to get their faith to work, but they don't have a revelation of God's love for them. Just like uh, uh, um, um, the guys were saying up here, jo Joanna and uh, Ruth Ann, they were talking about the love of God this morning. You know, the importance of God's love. And I tell you, God's love, you cannot underestimate the love of God in your life. Now, I, did, I, I found it hard to talk about God's love for years because, yes, I understood God loved me, but I didn't really have a deep understanding of his love. Um, because I was too busy, I was too busy being in control kind of a thing of my own Christian experience. That I was doing it out of my own ability for a long time. Not, not completely, but there was a huge part where I was doing my Christian walk out of my ability. But I'm telling you, God's love floored me, so it did. And God's grace floored me and it changed my Christian walk because I got back to relationship and stopped, and I stopped being a, a Christian robot. I got back to relationship. And I found out that my faith went through the roof out of relationship with Him. Instead of trying to work up faith, I just started to flow in faith because I trust Him. I know my Father. And I used to think that the love of God was something only the girls would talk about. You know, as a lad, we want to be macho. You don't see, always see the fellas going up and put their arms around and say, oh, I love you. But you see the girls crying and hugging and doing that naturally. Whereas guys want to put their... You don't want to stand like this, you know. What about you? No. You know, we don't want to show that we maybe had a tough week or, you know, what was on. We don't want to show that. Because that's... I would be looked upon as not being manly. Now, so for me, the way I was brought up, especially with my mates, you didn't tell any of your mates, you know, I love you, mate. No, you'd have got a box in the face if you'd have said, I love you, mate. Now, you could have walked up to any of them, hit them, uh, give them a dead arm, and they'd have appreciated that better than telling you that you loved them. So when I heard about the love of God and stuff like that, yeah, I understood God loved me, and I could see it in the Scriptures um, to a degree, but I, I found it hard to actually allow God to love me really allow him to hit me with his love. I found that very difficult. But the reality of it is, if you want to be a person of faith, you have to have an intimate relationship with God through his word and allow this love letter of the word of God to really penetrate your heart to where you fall in love with him. Because faith works by love. And the reason so many Christians, their car is like chugging with bad diesel. It's because they have not allowed the premium diesel of the Word of God, the love of God to get in them, that actually causes their car to flow to where they are living out of that relationship with God. That I'm loved. I'm a child of God. I'm loved. How many Christians live in guilt and condemnation? How many Christians live in fear? Shame. All of those things. And you know what it is? It's bad. And then the Christian, the Christian walk is a struggle. It's hard to really trust God when we think that God's angry with us and we think God's against us and all of those kind of things. It's really hard. But I'm telling you, you see, when you know God loves you, it's like, fill up! Woohoo! I tell you, do you know when you've got good diesel, you can go somewhere? Amen? You can go somewhere in God. See, that's an odd thing I've heard people say over the years. Oh, you don't, don't give people too much love. You need to balance it out with a bit of judgment as well. A bit of condemnation. Fill a bit of condemnation in there as well. You know, you, if you give people too much love, 
what'll happen is they, they'll run off on God. That's like saying, if I give my wife too much love, she's going to run off with another man. If I come home with, with, with flowers, praise God, I need to do that some of these days, actually. Um, <laughs> actually, we, we've, we've one of those great relationships where Dana walks in and says, they're from you, and goes and puts them in the vase. That's no word of a lie. Because she knows exactly the flowers that she likes. So I go in and I buy the wrong ones. So she just comes in and says, you know, this is your money. This is what you bought me. I love the money. I absolutely love them. And she goes and puts them in. I say, I, I just knew I needed to get you flowers today. And then? <laughs> it's a great recipe. Actually, it works for Christmas as well. The, the other day, she said, <laughs> she said to me the other day, we were talking. I said, is there anything you see, you, 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 you see coming up to Christmas? And I says, let me know. He said, I, I bought too many wrong things, okay? The worst one I bought was a treadmill for her. I'll tell you, that didn't go down too well, I can tell you. <laughs> Lovely present. <laughs> she asked me for a watch, and I thought, ah, I'd get her a treadmill. This was years ago. We actually hadn't even got married at this stage. And I was thinking of her, you know, walking, because she used to go walking down country lanes and everything. And I used to say, I don't want her walking down them country lanes. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll buy her a treadmill, and then she can walk in the house. That's what I was thinking. I didn't know that was a bad buy, but I'll tell you what, I know now. I never hear the end of it. Then. <laughs> she, and now that, she's, now that she's preaching and different things as well, she's even, now she's using all these things as illustrations against me. <laughs> but I tell you, I'll never buy another exercise thing again in my life. Amen. No, but... <laughs> but Man, don't buy your wives an action, anything, treadmill, anything like that. Or the best one I ever heard was uh, somebody bought their wife a, a, a grave plot. That was a great one, wasn't it? <laughs> Got them up on Christmas morning, took them out to the graveyard and said, I bought you that. See, men are, men, <laughs> men need help. Men are too practical and logical. They're just thinking, you know what, someday you're going to need that. <laughs> no, I, t I tell you, she wants something she can wear or something or spray or go somewhere, a meal or... Praise the Lord. Anyway, <laughs> what was I going to say now? <laughs> yeah, the other, the other night, um, I said, there's anything you're looking forward to getting um, for Christmas or wanting or something. So there was a necklace so I says, did you know what? She had to order this from some place. So I says, um, I walked upstairs and came downstairs and I had money that I'd set aside for, for, for Christmas. And I walked in and I says, there you go. You can order it now. It'll be here for Christmas. Because I know it's going to be what she desires. Anyway, praise God. I know you got a clue what I'm talking about now. But anyway, uh, it's good. Amen. What's that? <laughs> Gifts. Praise God, it doesn't help either. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God. Well, faith works by love anyway. <laughs> um, Galatians chapter 5 here for a second. <laughs> I'll be near the end. I'll go, yeah, that's what that was about. <laughs> but praise God, faith works by love. Amen. Um, Galatians chapter 5. Oh, that's it. Praise God. I knew I married her for something. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, praise God for the joy of the Lord. Amen. No, but it's like saying if, if I bought my wife loads of things and loved her and you know what, just, just, just poured love into her all the time like that, that you know what, she's going to run off with someone else. You know, that's... Uh, that's like saying the same thing, that if you receive God's love and you, t you receive that unconditional love of God, that it's going to give you a real hunger and desire for the world. That's not true. That's a lie. I, I tell you, there's people who are looking for any excuse. They're, not, they're just looking for some kind of a... They're, they're like a, a, a lawyer looking for some kind of a loophole because they already have that desire. They want to live a certain way. But I'm telling you, when you truly get an understanding of God's love for you, I tell you... you you would do anything for him. You would go to the lens of this world for him. You will find out what he has for you because that love, it changes you. Do you know what? When you fall in love, I, I tell you, when, when myself and Donna started going out, like, like I was living up, up in Lurgan. She, she was in Dundalk. And so I was 
working from the early hours of the morning, driving in the dark, coming home with matchsticks in my eyes to stay awake. I, this is literally, I used to drive and stick my head out the window to let the air hit me in the face so that I could stay awake driving home. You know what? I, love causes you to do things that other people will not do. Amen? You, you do anything. You know what? It didn't matter whether I was tired or not. I had to see her. So I, 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 when you get love in you, that's why love is the best premium diesel that you can get into your faith walk because it actually causes your faith to work to where you start trusting God more. What does it come out of? It comes out of what you put in. And that's why in Galatians 5, it says here in verse 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, this is Galatians 5 verse 1. When, when you have been free in Jesus Christ, don't go back to bondage is what I'm saying. Once Jesus set you free, I tell you, you didn't have to earn from Jesus. You received Jesus. So I'm saying when you become a believer, don't start living out of performance again. Stay in freedom. Stay in a place where you receive from Him. He has provided everything for us. This is a relationship. He's the initiator in this relationship. Our job is to receive. That's our job. And so it's saying, don't go back into bondage. It says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ, look at what a statement, Christ shall profit you nothing. I don't want to live my life where Jesus isn't a fact in my life. I want to live my life where he's benefiting my life every day. You know, he, he, he wants to change our life. We're saved, but he wants to, that outworking of that where you work out what is already in. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You work out what He has put in. He puts it in. We work it out. He provides. I don't want Jesus in my life where Jesus is on the subs bench because I'm in control, trying to earn from Him what He has freely provided. That's what Galatians is, is saying. It's saying don't go back to earning. Stay in a place where Jesus provided everything. Learn how to be a good receiver of what he has provided. So circumcision was something that the Old Testament saints were very familiar with, you know, um, where they would be circumcised, the men circumcised in the flesh. And, you know, it was something physical. But as believers, you know, we don't have to be circumcised to be closer to God. Some people are for medical reasons, but being circumcised doesn't make anybody closer to God. Amen. I would say, blowing a ram's horn, a shofar, doesn't bring you closer to God. Let me tell you, you have access straight into the Father. Just walk in boldly. You don't have to put your cloth on to go into the presence of God. Amen. When we say, well, I need to blow the ram's horn. Let me tell you, I don't need to blow no dead ram's horn. I just need to proclaim what Jesus has won for me. Amen. See, a ram's horn was, was symbolized something in the Old Testament. Yeah, there had to be a death of a ram, and it symbolizes jubilee. You know, thank God Jesus is our jubilee. I tell you, Jesus is better than all of the types of the Old Testament. I'm not going to put Jesus on the subs bench because I'm too busy doing all of my things in religion. I tell you, I'm going to embrace Jesus. Jesus is far better. See, there's true freedom in Jesus. See, what happened here with the Galatians was they went back to doing things thinking that if I do these things, then I'll have God's favor. If I do this, that, and the other and keep this and keep this festival and all of that, then I'll have God's favor. Or for a while there uh, on Christian television, you had this thing where you had a big altar at the front and it was you, if you get your certain offering, they tell you exactly how much you had to give. It was amazing. Like you, could, you could have like three standards. You know, if you give this standard, you'd get this blessing. But then if you want to give a super duper offering, you get a super duper blessing. Let me tell you, all the blessings are free for us. In actual fact, you're already blessed. You don't have to earn from God. You don't have to earn God's favor. And when we give, our giving is to just to receive what is already ours. We operate in faith. We don't operate in law. We're not coming and saying to God, you know what, if I do this, then God, this unlocks this box. No, all the boxes are opened already for us. 
Faith is just coming and taking what's ours in Christ. Amen? And no earning. So here's this super duper offering. I hate that stuff. Do you know why? Because it does away with what Jesus has done and it puts the attention back on the person where the person thinks that I'll have favor with God based on something that I do. Let me tell you, as a believer, you already have the favor of God. Amen? You're already blessed. Ephesians says that you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're already blessed. You're already favored. Praise God. See, that's what Paul was um, um, challenging here because a lot of people got saved by faith and grace. And then they went back into a trap because there was these legalistic Judaizers, you called them, who came and said, yes, you need Jesus, but you still need Moses. And Paul said, no, I'm telling you, Moses was a type showing us Jesus. All of those were types pointing to Jesus. But when you get Jesus, let me tell you, you have the real. Why would you hug a shadow when you can hug the person? Why would you embrace the shadow when you can walk in what Jesus truly came to give? And so Paul challenged it. And he says, and Paul was circumcised. But Paul stopped trusting in his circumcision and started trusting in Jesus and said, I count all things but dung for the excellency of knowing him. It's all about knowing Jesus. And he said, I'm living my life to know him that I might know him. Not know a bunch of rules, but know him. Amen. That sets us free as believers. I, I've seen believers fall into these traps. Um, I've seen people get in, you know, even like communion, and then you get into Passover. Do you know, we've only been given two emblems for, our, for us as believers. That is the bread and the wine. That's, that's what's been given to us. The Jewish people, they, they did it, and they like had four cups, and they had a whole meal. And they had a whole, it was like a Christmas event whenever you had done Passover. And I know even believers today that still, they do that. But it's, the, they think that makes you more holy. But I'm telling you as a believer, when you take the bread and the wine and you remember what Jesus done for you, that, that will benefit your life. Do this in remembrance of me. That was the only two parts of that Passover meal that Jesus gave to the church was that part of the bread and the wine. We don't have to go back and do the whole thing and then get all of the, the, the bitter herbs and all of that kind of thing. Why? Because all of that bitter herbs and all of that Jesus took for us at the cross. Just remember what he done for you. You don't have to go through all of that. It's not about the bread and how it's made and people get into all these religious things. You know, I went to a place and it said, we, we do communion, but we do it with the real bread. I'm like, I, I'm telling you, all I'm interested in is just taking a piece of bread. I don't care if it's from Pat's Bakery. I don't care where it's from. I don't care if it's from the Cozy Bakery. And all I care about is when you take that to say, do this in remembrance of me. If you don't remember what Jesus done for you, you wasted your time. If it was all about doing a religious thing and we have certain wee plates and all and, and you put trust in that and it takes you away from Jesus. See, it's all about a relationship with him. Amen? I don't want Christ to not profit my life. I want him to benefit my life. Um, verse 4, it, or look, verse 3, it says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised. Look at this, that he is a debtor to the Holy you know what that means? That means if you start trusting in something that you do, you have to keep everything. Do you know what the problem there is? None of us can keep everything. So you, instead of living in grace, you're back to debt. And you know what debt is? That means I, have to, I owe something. I have to pay for something. Let me tell you, you don't have to pay for one thing that Jesus provided for you. You freely receive. And so what happens is people then, instead of freely receiving from Jesus, they become Jesus. Now I have to earn it. You know, we, we heard a statement years ago, and we have kept it for us all of our Christian walk, and that is this, you don't have to pay for the same meal twice. Do you know if somebody pays for your meal, if you go out to eat, and you go and pay for it, you're stupid. <laughs> Amen. You know, as you know, when you get to tell them to say, oh no, that was already paid for, and you go, oh, yeah, but I'm paying for it because you feel you have to pay. You know what that is? That's, a, that's, a, that's a, I can't receive. 
You always live in debt, always own. Oh, I owe, I owe, I owe, I owe, I owe. The Bible says, owe oh, no man anything but to love him. Amen. We're not meant to be in that kind of debt. And we're not in debt to God. Once you receive Jesus, let me tell you, Jesus paid it all. Amen. The old hymn used to say, all to him I owe. Amen. As in my life, but he paid it all. All to him I owe. What I owe, I just give him my life. Out of, out of um, uh, love. Because he paid it all. What I'm doing is I'm coming and saying, Lord, I lay my life down before you. See, when you realize what he's done for you, you come with that attitude of God, here, I'll give you everything. Because you did it all. It's a, it's a thankfulness of desiring to serve him. Amen? It's powerful. It really is. Um, verse 4, it says, Christ has become of no effect unto me. Whosoever you are who are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Fallen from grace just means where you go back to trying to do it your way and earn from God. It doesn't mean you lose your salvation. It just means instead of receiving from God, now I'm trying to earn from God. Now, verse 5, it says, For we through the Spirit do wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. That's talking about when we see Jesus face to face. Verse 6, it says, For in Christ Jesus, look at this, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. In other words, it doesn't matter whether you're circumcised or not. It doesn't matter whether you put a prayer shawl on you or not. It doesn't matter whether you do the full Passover meal or not. It doesn't matter is what it's saying. Here's the only thing that matters. Faith that works by love. Amen? Faith that works by love. Love. That is all that matters. Paul's bringing it down to a conclusion here. He's saying, you know what? Here's all that matters, guys. Is faith that works by love. That's not your love. That's his love. When you understand God's love for you, I'm telling you, when you hit that car, it's full of the good diesel, and it's going to run. Amen? Amen? You see, it's easy to trust someone that you know. It's hard to trust somebody you don't know. But when you know God's love for you, when you know the love of Christ, when you know the Father's love for you, what happens is it causes you to believe God. It's hard to trust someone that you don't know. Amen? That's why it's relationship. What's this word all about? This word reveals God so that you realize how much He loves you. And when you know how much He loves you, then it's easy to then start to walk with Him in intimacy because you know His love for you. I tell you, He loves you today. He loves you this morning. You're His. You belong to Him. You know, how many believers truly live with that awareness that I belong to God and God loves me? I mean, He absolutely loves you. You know, we were preaching last week and God gave me a word for a guy in the church and the word was just this, to let the fellow know that God absolutely loves you. God loves you. You're on His heart. And He loves you not because of what you do. He loves you because He loves you. You're His. You belong to him. That's the love of God. Let me tell you, God was loving you before you even got saved. While you were yet a sinner, the Bible says, Christ died for us. He commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you know, if Jesus loved you at your worst, do you not think he loves you now that you're his child? Romans 5 says, how much more does he love you now? Amen. You're loved. See, it's hard to put faith in someone or to trust someone that you do not know. Let me tell you, I know my wife better than anybody. She still loves me even though I was keeping her going. We're like that in the house. That's the way we carry on. We keep each other going. My kids actually said to me, I said, Dad, you know what, there's, there's people we know, they wouldn't survive in our house. <laughs> they wouldn't survive in our house, Dad. Do you know why, Daddy? They can't take a slagging. 
But if you want to live in our house, you, you have to get a thick skin. Because we keep each other going, but we do it in love. You know, Alexis, we were in town last night together, and she was like to me, she says, Oh, Daddy, me and you, we have to take some slagging in our house, don't we? Because I tell you, Tyler is a, an expert slagger, so he is. I think he has a degree in it at this stage. <laughs> but you know what? I, 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 love, I love a laugh. I like a, I like a bit of banter in the home. We keep each other, not, not in malice or anything like that, but we keep each other going about everything. You know what, uh, uh, Donna was um, uh, it's a good few weeks ago, but she, she had a few symptoms on her body, and she was talking like this here, and she, uh, my kids were calling her Marge all week out of the Simpsons. Marge! <laughs> you know, every time she said something, it was Marge! <laughs> I don't even know whether I've ever seen an episode of the Simpsons, but you know, they know Marge! Marge! <laughs> um, <laughs> praise God. No, oh, yeah. But that's what it comes down to, is what I was saying the last time is here, is knowing God. You see, how do you know God? You know God through the Word. And when you know God through the Word, this is one way of knowing Him, okay? And to me, it's the best way of knowing Him, because the Word never changes. Sometimes people said, you know, I was praying and God spoke to me, and you know it doesn't line up with the Word. But I'm telling you, when you see God in the Word, you can base your life on that, because the Word never changes. And yet God does speak to us in prayer and all of those kind of things. But you know what? When you're in the Word of God and God starts illuminating that Word to you, do you know that's intimacy? That's intimacy. The disciples on the road to Emmaus, remember they spoke to Jesus and Jesus started to open up the Scriptures and the Bible says that Jesus revealed Himself to them from the Scriptures and the Bible says that their hearts burned within them. Do you know, do you know in the Scriptures in 1 Corinthians 7, chapter 7, it talks about an intimacy, just in a, in a physical relationship of intimacy. It talks about burning. You know, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. You know, some people burn the whole way up to the altar. You know what I mean? <laughs> Scorch marks the whole way up there. They're burning. <laughs> but, but what is that? That's, it's, when it talks about, you know, intimacy there in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it uses burning, but it's talking about physical relationship. Well, in the same way, when you're in the Word of God, you know, spiritually, you know, it's not like the physical thing, you know, we don't, don't have to go that direction, thinking like, ah, oh, but there's an, a knowing with God. And when God reveals the Word to you, do you know what? There's a burning in you to where it creates a desire in you for the things of God. And that, that's intimacy. See, when the Word of God becomes alive in you, you understand what I mean when it becomes alive? When it goes off in you, what happens is it's like, it's like heartburn on the inside of you. It's like the Word comes alive on the inside of you. It's like if you have heartburn, you know everything's like, oh, give me milk or Galveston or something. You're trying to, to deal with that burning because you know what? It, it's lit. Well, I'm telling you, when the Word of God goes off on the inside of you by the Spirit of God, it's lit. And when you see how much God loves you, I'm telling you, there's nothing will light you up more than knowing how much God loves you, that you belong to Him, that you're accepted with Him. There's something in that that when you realize that God loves you and His love is not dependent on you, it's not dependent on how good you are, it's dependent on His nature, that God loved you before you even received Him, before you were even born, Jesus demonstrated His love towards you. And it's, it's coming at you all the time. I tell you, as a believer, do you know what we need to do? Just let it hit us. It's like a tsunami coming of the love of God. Let me tell you, when you let God love you, and I have learned this, when you let God love you at your worst, let me tell you, when you understand that love at that point, let me tell you, you have love that you can give to others at their worst. Amen. When you go to the unsaved, you can say to him, God loves you. And you understand that. You know God does love you. God cares about you. They say, you don't know what I've done. It's not about that. Jesus, Jesus loved you so much. He went to the cross and died for you. He loves you. You know, I, I'm sure we've all heard of um, Nicky Cruz and David Wilkerson. Remember the, the switching the, the, what does he call that? crossing the switchblade. And there was a point in that film 
where Nicky Cruz was going to cut David Wilkerson to bits because he just kept giving him the love of God. And David Wilkerson said, you can cut me in a million pieces and every one of those pieces will cry out and say, God loves you. Jesus loves you. What brought that man to Nicky Cruz to his knees, a gang member? What brought him to his knees? The love of God. Amen? Because he knew that's love I do not deserve. It's love never fails. It's hard to fight that love. It's powerful. But you know what? When you understand how much God loves you, it actually causes you to believe him. Because he loves you. It's hard to believe God if you don't know him. As I said, I know my wife better than anybody. Now, if someone was to come and say to me that, you know, Paul, the other night when you were preaching, I was driving up the town and I seen your wife falling out of a nightclub and she was half-dressed and she was with another man and they got in a taxi and they drove off, I'd say, not my wife. Do you know why? Because I know her. Now, if one of Donna's friends was to say, Paul, I know the other night when you were preaching, you know, I called down and collected your wife. We went into town and we got ice cream. And then we went back to your house and Donna went up and got into her pajamas. You know what? She, she got a load of chocolate out of the fridge and, was, and she sat down and we wa watched the chick flick together. And you know what? And she fell asleep halfway through it. She was like, <laughs> I'd say, that's my wife. That's my wife. Do you know why? Because I know her. Well, I'm telling you, when somebody tells me that God will put sickness on you to teach you a lesson, I'm going, that's not my father. Amen. And somebody says to me, do you know, God will break you to humble you. I say, that's not my father. God will love you into submission. God will love you so much that you'll just go, God, it's hard to fight against you. You love me too much. Amen. People say, does that mean God doesn't correct? God corrects. But you know what? When God corrects, he corrects us in love. And how does he do it? He does it through the word. He doesn't do it through cancer. He doesn't do it through, you know, taking everything from you and say, I'll teach you a lesson. Now you'll follow me. No, there's a lot of people have lost everything. And when they got to the end of themselves, then they looked up and they realized they need God in my life. But it wasn't God brought all of the things. But I tell you, God was there the whole time in love, ready to receive that person who was hurting or broken. Amen? God will never take from you. What God will take from The only thing I always say God will take from you is all your hurt. He'll take your pain. He'll take your grief. He'll take your sorrows. Amen? He'll take anything that's robbing from you. That's what God takes. Amen? I, ju I just want to finish with just saying something this morning. Just, just let me look at Luke here just for one second. And we'll close over here this morning. When people say, how do you know God? Well, the Word of God is the best place to start. Amen? When you open the Word and you get into it and you let God just reveal to you who He is, what He's done, to, done for you. You ask the Holy Ghost as you go to the Word, speak to me. Amen? Reveal to me who you are. Reveal to me the things of my Father. Reveal to me. Give me a deeper revelation of what Jesus has won for me. Amen? And see how much he loves you. I know there's lots of things, but we're talking on relationship here. But you know what? He loves you. Herein is love. Not that we love him, but that he loved us. Amen? That's true love. True love is not your love for God. True love is that He loves you. Amen? We love Him because He first loved us. Amen? First. Praise God. I, ju I just want to share this here, but here, and this is Luke 12, and I'll close here this morning. But in Luke 12, this is where you see that faith works by love. And you can see that when you know how much God loves you, you can trust Him. And it, talk, it talks here about, you know, um, look, I'll just read verse 22. I'll just read through a couple of things here and I'll close. Look what it says here. And He said unto His disciples, Wherefore I say unto you, look at this, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than the meat, and the body is more than raiment, or more than clothes. 
It says, Consider the ravens, the birds. They neither sow nor reap, neither um, have storehouses or barns, and God feeds them. Look at this. How much more better are you than a bird? Let me tell you, if God looks after everything, do you not think he'll look after you? How much more? That's the way we're meant to think about our Father when it's his heart towards us. It's not how much less. Some people have such a bad image of themselves and a bad image of God that they think God's going to get them. And they think, if God's going to do anything good for someone, it'll surely be for somebody else. It won't be for me. But you know what? We need a revelation of God's love for us. And when you know God's love for you, you'll know that it's a how much more love. See, if God looks after everything else in this world, let me tell you, He'll look after you. How much more? See, when you know His love for you, you can start to trust Him. You don't have to worry when you know He loves you. You don't have, you don't have to be fearful. Perfect love casts out fear. That doesn't mean to say fear doesn't come and worry doesn't try to come, but you know you, how you combat it? You stand up and say, you know what, fear? You can go and jump because my Father loves me and I'm His. And if He looks after the birds, He'll look after me. Amen? Verse 25, which of you taking a thought can add one cubit to your stature? Verse 26, if you then be, in, uh, if you then be not able to do that which is least, why take your thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Let me tell you, Samson was, was um, clothed in the best. Yet God clothes nature that's full of beauty. So I'm telling you, God will look after. If God looks after nature, is what is what is springing out here is He'll look after you. If God then clothed the grass which is in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, look, it only has a bloom and it's gone. Let me tell you, God loves you. You're His. You'll be with Him forever, not for a second, and it's gone. You belong to Him. Look what it says. How much more? Will he clothe you? And look at this. Oh, you of little faith. What's little faith? Little faith is a lack of understanding of how much God loves you. That's what little faith is. See, when worry comes and we embrace it, do you know what it really is? It's a symptom of a lack of an understanding of how much God loves us. But you see, when you know how much God loves you, Notice your faith doesn't stay little anymore. See, faith works by love. So when, the more you understand God's love for you, the more you can trust Him. Amen? And, you know, sometimes people get condemned. Oh, I don't have a little faith, and they condemn themselves. No, I, it's a place of saying, you know what, God? I'm finding it hard trusting you at the minute. I'm worrying more than I normally do. Those things are, are, are really concerning me. You know, I, I'm... I feel fear just attaching itself to me. God, the, the problem is, I know the problem now, the problem is, I don't know how much you love me the way I'm meant to. I need to get back to knowing how much you love me. I need to be like the Apostle John, who said, I'm the disciple who Jesus loves. And I need to get back to saying that. I need, John said that five times in the Gospels. He called himself the disciple who Jesus loves. None of the other disciples called themselves that, but John did. You know why? Because he had an understanding of love. That's why he wrote so much about the love of God, because he knew how much God loved him. See, when fear comes or any of those things, all it is is a, it's a, and I mean, fear does come to everybody, okay? But when it's embraced and it starts controlling how we live and it's keeping us up half of the night, and all of those kind of things. Do you know what it is? It's a lack of understanding of how much God loves us. I'm telling you, God loves you. People say, how does the love of God practically work? Well, I'm telling you, when you know and get a revelation of God's love for you, this whole pandemic and everything's going on, and we're not living with our head in the sand, but I'm telling you, you'll go to bed at night and you'll sleep. You'll not be worrying, not concerned, not living terrified, you know, you'll trust and say, God, I'm yours. 
I'm yours. You look after me. I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed. Look, I'll say this here just in closing. Just based on this. Do you know, do you know what? <laughs> I've been driving for 30 years, okay? That's just driving down a mad. No, I've been driving for 30 years, okay? And I have never known in any of my cars how many miles any of my cars get to the gallon. I haven't got a clue. I don't know. People ask me stats about cars. I don't know. You want to know stats? Ask David. David's, David's a, a, loves his cars, knows cars. Don't ask me anything about cars. I just know that you, you put diesel or petrol in it and it goes. That's all I know. But here's the thing. I've been driving for the last 30 years. I don't have a clue how many miles you get to the gas. Any of those things. I know prices are going up and all of those things. All I know is this. When my car gets empty, I put stuff in. And for the last 30 years, God has always put stuff in the car. That's just the way I live. I don't know anything else. Now, I know the car that I'm in at the minute. The only reason I know how many miles you get to the gallon is because it says on the dashboard. That's the only reason they know. Don't have a clue anything else. Don't ask me anything about cars. But I tell you this, my car has always had diesel in it. And it doesn't matter what price anything goes to, how much more. God loves me. God loves you. You see, when you know how much he loves you, you don't have to be watching the price and running to get an extra few, like a, 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 an extra, a, you get an extra, this is what you get more in your car if you went five mile up the road and you, yes, you, you, you spent that getting the extra, you know, driving there. All I know is this, God will always look after you. David said, I was young and I'm now old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or recede begging bread. Amen. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let me just pray. Pray for you just as, as we close. This morning, praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to pray. I just, I, I just, I just want to pray. When I was talking there, I just, um, I just, I just know somebody's, somebody's been dealing with worry really bad. Someone that's been affecting your life, affecting, affecting how you've been living. But I, I'm telling you, I'm not going to ask you to, to, to come forward or anything. All I'm asking, going to ask you to do is just, is just receive this morning. This is where pray. Just receive. And start meditating on God's love for you. God loves you. Amen. God cares for you. Praise God. Yes, he does. Amen. He cares for you. We can cast all our cares on him. Why? See, it's relationship. Because he cares for you. Why can we do it? Why can we have faith to take care and worry and concern and give it to him? Why? Because he cares for us. It's relationship. When you know how much he loves you, you can give him those worries. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, whoever that is, Lord, today, Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, just for the awareness of God's love. And, Lord, we just release that today, Lord God. Just give it to you. We cast all our care on you, all our worry, all concern. Give it over on you, Lord God, to the point to where we don't have it anymore. Lord, as it says there, it means to cast forcibly upon you. So we take any concern. Lord, whatever, whatever that is that has been upsetting that person, keeping them up, Lord, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus and just take authority over that in Jesus' name. And if that's you this morning, just, just, just say to yourself, I'm getting a peaceful night's sleep tonight. My Father loves me. He's going to look after me. He's taking care of me. Just receive that. Just let the barriers down. Just realize God's, God's looking after you. How much more? You're His. You belong to Him. Praise God. Lord, we just thank you and just praise you for your love. And for everyone here, Lord God, Lord, I just thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for your love, your healing power, ministering to bodies, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord God, that you love us. You want us well, Lord God. You want us healthy and strong, Lord God. So, Lord, we receive your, your healing into our bodies this morning. 
In Jesus' name, Lord God, we just, we just thank you. We just receive that in the name of Jesus. Just thank you for the healing power of God, Lord. We give you praise this morning. Lord, we just praise you and give you glory and thank you for who you are. Thank you that you're such a good father. You're such a good father. You love us, Lord. Lord, it's your pleasure to give us the kingdom, Lord. Lord, we give you glory in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.